Well, hello there, everyone. Alexis Brooks here from Higher Journeys, back with another episode of Conscious Commentary. I hope you all are doing well, wherever you may be on this little blue planet. I certainly hope by now you have had a chance to listen to what I think is probably the best conversation I've had with my frequent guest, Cynthia Sue Larson. Cynthia, if you don't know, is the uh, proprietor, author, and uh, researcher of Reality Shifts. The website is uh, called realityshifts.com, and she has been studying the phenomenon of high strangeness of all kinds for many years, not the least of which is the Mandela effect. And that's uh, what we talked about. Uh, this past Wednesday on our show. But it went as as per usual in all sorts of directions. Uh, Certainly the Mandela effect was probably the mainstay of the conversation, but it had to do with uh, what somebody said, really more than one person, is that they had heard she had died. They had heard that she had died. And of course, that was not the case. Uh, But the question is, that we were really talking about is how would the Mandela effect if this is more than just now listen, we hear that people die all the time, and it ends up not to be true. But this is a little bit more involved. We're talking about someone I'm going to give you one example. And then I'm immediately going to go into a takeoff on this. This particular person who wrote to Cynthia had been a fan of hers, learned of her work, subsequently went to her Facebook page. And he says, that he saw an announcement from her husband stating that she had passed away after a long illness. Now, we know that's not the case, but the conversation that Cynthia and I had had to do with a phenomenon that she calls alive again, the alive again phenomenon, which the way she describes it is sort of indicative of or an aspect of the Mandela effect in which somehow timelines are altered and whether they're altered or coexisting in one reality, she could be dead. And in another, that which we know is the 3D, she's not. But here's the deal. This is not, (laughs) I hope I've teased this enough. You definitely want to go back and uh, listen to that episode in its entirety because it is woo. I called it baffling because it is all of these things of high strangeness. Are they not? But the reason why I wanted to uh, bring that up as sort of a precursor to what we're going to talk about uh, today in Conscious Commentary has to do with what this gentleman said he saw with his eyes on a computer monitor, I would assume, or maybe, I don't know, maybe a, a, a device of some sort in which he saw the post read it verbatim uh, uh, announcing her passing. So I thought this would be a good opportunity. In fact, I, I posed the question to Cynthia, what role do you think technology may be playing in areas of high strangeness? I had asked her to, let's talk about, could there be a sort of bioelectric factor where our brain and the electromagnetic field that surrounds us, including and especially technology, may be getting entangled and allowing for some of these bizarre things to happen. Now, I don't know that she answered, well, first of all, we didn't have a chance to really go into it in in great detail, but I, I somehow felt that it needed to be reapproached because I don't know about you guys, but I have seen, particularly since the advent of not just technology, but social media, we're on these, our devices and computers so much creating content, etc. So much. I'm on Skype, I'm on, of course, Facebook and other things. And invariably, I see, have seen so many just absolutely bizarre synchronicities, uh, uh, and other anomalies come up that seem to somehow be connected through the technology, not as the origin, but is there some factor that technology is playing in spiking up incidents of high strangeness? And that's what I want to talk about today. But first, I want to go back to this gentleman. I wish I could find the post. I would read, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do it. I think it's worth it. Let me see if I can find uh, the the section of the email that he had sent to Cynthia about uh, reading about her passing on Facebook. Let's see if I can find it here. Here it is right here. 
I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he essentially said after uh, apparently watching a show on Gaia TV in which Cynthia was a guest, he decided to, I'm going to read it verbatim, I decided to visit your Facebook page to learn more about Cynthia. Upon arriving at your Facebook page, I was greeted with a message from your husband stating that he regretted to inform us that you had passed away and that you had been ill for quite a while. I was shocked to read this news and immediately responded, offering my condolences. I remember feeling this great sadness come over me as I had very much enjoyed your work. Okay, so that's that's the setup there. He went to her Facebook page and he said that he saw and read I would imagine verbatim what the husband allegedly said. Now, this did not happen. Let, let's let's just talk 3D for a minute. <laughs> we have to assume that I don't know. Did other people see it? The, see this Facebook post? I don't recall Cynthia mentioning she now she did mention I don't know th- there may have been some other people because Cynthia did mention that she had heard from several individuals not her directly necessarily but s- got wind of several individuals who also thought she had passed away. So what's going on here? Let's assume for the sake of argument and I'm going to I'm going to give you another example. If you heard the show with Cynthia already then maybe you heard me tell this uh, uh the story to her and to the audience but I'm going to mention it again, just to kind of draw up our point here. You know what, I've got my timer on (laughs) today, because I'm determined not to keep you guys longer than necessary. Let's see how we do here. Let's see how we do. Okay, I'm looking, looking here at the timer. Let's assume for the sake of argument that this was this was an incident of high strangeness, that somehow, this is hard to explain. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I want to step back for a minute. Let me tell you a story and maybe it'll help me articulate to you what I'm trying to say. (laughs) For me, I've had a similar experience where let's just say I saw something that ended up being true, but there was a, a, a gap by days in what I saw and what eventually happened. It has to do with James Candelfini. And again, I have told this story before. So if you've heard it, apologies, but I want to make the connection. James Gandolfini, who is an actor, uh, well known for his role in, in Sopranos and other films and, and, and TV programs, passed away in 2013. I will never forget. I was sitting at my kitchen table at the time on my laptop, looking for goodness knows what. I have no idea. I remember that I was moving rather quickly to whatever I was trying to find, had perused some news websites, and in the process of perusing these sites, thought I saw a headline that read, James Gandolfini dead at whatever age. I don't remember. I quickly moved past it. And, you know, clearly, sometimes our brain won't register something until after we see it. And I I said to myself, did I see what I think I saw? I try to back out, you know, to to, uh, hit that arrow button to go back to the pages that I had subsequently visited. Nothing was there. But I was certain I could even recall seeing an image. But again, it was so quick. It was a flash. I went into my history to see if I could find the web page nowhere to be found. Subsequently, I want to say at this point, oh, this has been a while, so I can't remember exactly, but I want to say about three days later, maybe even four, the news had come out that he had died. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Now, okay, I suppose you could argue that maybe he actually died on the day that I saw it and the news got leaked. That could be. I've thought about that. I want to rule everything out. But let's assume that did not happen. Somehow, through the technology, I was able to see a headline that invariably would not come out until several days later. So what is happening here? And this is where I posed the question to Cynthia. Are we somehow, our brain being a, its own technology, and there's still so much mystery about what it actually does, what role it actually plays, Assuming consciousness is something independent of, or certainly not an epiphenomenon of the brain, but still the brain has a role to play. Is it the interface with this 3D reality? And then, of course, there are other uh, uh, 
tools, I suppose, that we have to procure information outside of the 3D. But I find it interesting, and I'm going to bring up some more examples of how it seems technology has been, it's been baffling as to some of the strangeness that that uh, has come out from people using technology. And there are all sorts of things. We're going to get into a couple of those things. But in the explaining of the James Gandolfini scenario, coupled with, I believe his name was Steve Boucher, who wrote to Cynthia saying that she he had seen the Facebook post in which she had passed away. Now, we know that the husband never wrote such a thing in the 3D, because she didn't. So what did he see? And I really wanted to probe her. In fact, I may try to reach out to Steve Boucher myself if I can. If you're listening, Steve, I'd love to talk to you to find out what you saw. How much, how long were you on that Facebook page? Do you recall the actual date? Do you recall verbatim what was said? A- any detail that you can remember? Again, in my case with James Gandolfini, the thing is, I was moving so quickly. It was, did I imagine that I saw? Uh, did I imagine that I saw that headline? Was that a form of precognition that superimposed itself, at least at some level, on my screen in front of me? Or did I create that? I mean, there's so many possibilities here. But I still wonder if the technology in and of itself, being electromagnetic in nature, us being electromagnetic in nature, having their, uh, if there is some sort of, I use the term entanglement or intersection, where technology can actually um, elevate our own psychic proclivity when we're entangled with it. This is really what I'm asking, because I think there's something very odd going on. The other thing is, um, let's talk about other weirdness, (laughs) other weirdness with technology. Have y'all heard of EVP? This is a very old phenomenon uh, known as electronic voice phenomena. Electronic voice phenomena is essentially uh, a variety of apparatuses that have been used to apparently pick up discarnate voices. Constantine Rodif, I, I remember studying him many years ago, was a, a Latvian psychologist uh, who, uh, out of Sweden who worked uh, very closely with EVP and I guess made over 100,000 recordings that he described as uh, spirit communication. Wonder what he would be saying now with the, the, the smart technologies that we have now, because certainly I believe that there is an increase in call it paranormal activity uh, uh, insofar as our technologies are concerned. EVP, also known as Instrumental Transcommunication, or ITC, uh, sort of used in a broader sense, where uh, there are certain processes in which people will hear distinct voices or see things coming out of televisions, computer monitors, smartphones, (laughs) etc., ITC. So I wonder about this. I really do. If somehow, you know, you you think of artificial intelligence and how intelligent is it that it may even be able to interact with us and act as a bridge between the 3D and the ether world, the other world. There's something very interesting going on here. I've had a multitude of Skype conversations. I won't say a multitude. I'll take that back. Enough to take notice in which uh, there have been interference uh, that seemed not normal. It didn't seem technical or mechanical. It seemed as if there were at times voices coming through. I'm not going to, I don't have time to really get into it, but very interesting stuff. I'm thinking of one in particular where I was having a conference call with someone and, and had recorded it for, for, uh, uh, to go over the notes. And invariably, when I went back to the uh, the recording, it sounded as if there was someone clearly breathing. I even had it checked out by a, a, a paranormal researcher colleague of mine who tested it in a number of, uh, through, put it through some of his own testing, and could not come up with any explanation. I remember uh, doing an interview with uh, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who's also a well-known paranormal researcher and we were the subject that we were discussing 
uh, was a bit creepy. <laughs> uh, and a bit in terms of probing into the phenomena, we were talking about sh- the shadow being phenomenon. And we had so many interruptions, not just interruptions through Skype. But uh, as a matter of fact, Sean Stone was on that particular show. And his Skype, the program itself just wouldn't even show up on his computer, he had to reinstall it. I mean, there were just, just uh, too many things to, to be called coincidence, certainly. And Rosemary feels, uh, she's emphatic, in fact, that when discussing certain subjects, there will be interference because certain subjects they don't want discussed. I don't know. Hard to say. But again, the common denominator is technology, somehow acting as a bridge, a conduit, an interface, uh, so that certain instances of high strangeness are maybe even elevated. I'm thinking of another situation. I'm just just kind of randomly thinking about this, but Ray Hernandez, who uh, is a part of the Free Organization, Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences, they've changed the name, who works with Mary Rodwell. Well, long story short, he, in the in the early stages of thinking about getting more into this work, and it's a long story that I believe he's told publicly, certain, a, a set of synchronicities began to happen that were just mind-boggling, not the least of which was, I don't know whether he had been thinking about Mary Rodwell or something. And he may have, I'm not sure. But what happened was, out of the, no, he wasn't thinking about, he wasn't thinking about Mary, but something having to do with starting the organization um, would would ultimately involve Mary. Out of the blue, Mary Rodwell emailed him Uh, And in the email, I'm trying to recall, in the email, she said something like, Ray, I I so apologize for just now answering you. I know you sent this email six months ago. But at the moment that she answered him six months later was perfect timing for whatever he needed. I've got to go back and get that straight. I, I apologize if I didn't tell that properly. Again, though, technology being this sort of, um, this strange variable in in some of the paranormal experiences that we're having. There are a lot of question marks here. And again, we did bring this up with, uh, with uh, Cynthia yesterday. Uh, I think it's worth going through again. I don't know. It's This is something very quick I'm just leaving with you to think about. Let's continue this conversation because I think it's it's fascinating. I have an inkling that our technologies today and as they increase in their speed and their processing in in the broadband, we won't go into 5G right now, will we? <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's a lot that I think we're facing. And I think there are a lot of factors to if there is something going on that would be considered paranormal, including uh, our own interface with technology, like seeing that, that Facebook post about Cynthia, me seeing the James Gandolfini headline that he had died, What's going on, people? What's going on? That's where I'm going to leave it today. I think I just about hit my target. I may be a couple minutes over, but I think this is the best I've done. <laughs> Listen, everyone, always a pleasure to talk to you, uh, albeit brief today. I want to hear your comments on this. I want to hear your thoughts about if you think technology is playing a role in incidents of high strangeness, will you? So so answer, uh, leave me some comments in the comment section. Of course, you can go to my Facebook page and uh, weigh in there. So that's about it for now. Let's see what's coming up. Oh, I know what's coming up. Or I should say who's coming up. Linda Moulton Howe is coming up next week on Higher Journeys. I am so excited to have Linda back. We're going to be talking about other incidents of high strangeness that have to do with binary code and symbols as it relates to the UFO phenomenon. So stay tuned for that. All right, everyone, you know what to do. If you like what you heard, please hit that like button, subscribe, and by all means, hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when Linda Moulton Howe comes on next week, next Wednesday, and beyond, of course. If you hit the notification bell, you'll always get notified. So that's it, folks. I, as always, thank you for for taking this high journey with me. So many things to explore, so many questions, but let's let's keep exploring the mystery, shall we? Okay, I'll talk to y'all soon. Take care.